Hi, good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Social Media for Real Estate Agents webinar and preview of the upcoming MAPS group coaching program called Social Media for Real Estate Agents. I am Carlos Gill, your MAPS coach, and today I am going to present to you an intro to our four-week course, uh, and also I'm going to answer your questions that you may have on using social media for real estate. So a little bit about your coach. Uh, again, my name is Carlos Skill. I am based in San Francisco here in the Bay Area. I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I have about 10 years working in both B2B and B2C social media marketing. I previously started social media for a supermarket chain in the Southeast by the name of Winn-Dixie. I used to run digital marketing for Save-A-Lot. I also used to work for LinkedIn and uh, currently I run social media globally for a organization by the name of BMC. Uh, I'm an industry speaker and thought leader, so you can see me speak at events like South by Southwest, which just passed, Social Media Marketing World, which is next week. I've been featured in Mashable as one of the top 50 Snapchat influencers. Um, I've also been featured in Inc. Magazine. I happen to be a contributor for Inc. And uh, a known fact about me, uh, my parents are both real estate broker agents. So I've actually grown up in the real estate industry. Uh, I've helped my parents market and grow their business throughout the years since social media kind of became a thing back in the uh, MySpace days. And I've uh, been able to help my, my folks out quite a bit in leveraging new media such as Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and even Snapchat now in growing their businesses. So um, a little bit more as we get started with, uh, with this webinar, we just finished doing our first uh, program uh, just about a month ago. Uh, that was very well received, so I'm really excited uh, that this program is going to be the second uh, one offered by Keller Williams. Now, let's jump right into it. Why is social media critical for yourselves as real estate professionals in 2017? And first of all, it's because of competition. So as of uh, November, and that's I should say 2016, as of November 2016, there are over 1.2 million uh, NAR members. There's over 1.2 million folks out there competing with yourself, essentially, and with your colleagues and peers. 91% of realtors say that they use social media to some extent, and this is as of a 2013-2014 realtor technology survey. I would imagine that you know, now, three years later, you probably have closer to 100% uh, of realtors using social media. Uh, it's almost impossible to not be on social media nowadays. And with that being said, a very compelling reason as to why not only should you be on social media as a realtor, as a professional in the business, um, is because of the demographic of who is predominantly buying homes. Um, the survey also revealed that the median age of first time home buyers is 32 years old of age. So if you really think of the makeup of a 32 year old, this is an individual that's not looking at print advertisement when they're looking for listings to buy homes. Instead, they're going online, they're going on Zillow, they're going on, on mobile apps, and they're using digital technology to find homes. And likewise, they're also using social media to do research on agents in the area. They're having conversations with their friends on Facebook and such about the home buying or home selling experience. So it's really important to keep in mind that oftentimes we might lose focus of who the, the end consumer is. In this case, based on research, um, 32 years old is the average uh, you know, at age of a first time home buyer. Now, in terms of the power that Facebook offers you specifically, there's over 1.4 billion active users on Facebook. This is more than China's population. And with that being said, 77% of brand conversations on social media are people looking for advice, information, or help. Now think about yourself as a consumer for a moment. Anytime that you're looking for a recommendation on what car to buy, um, what TV you should buy, Think of your own behavior of when you go on social media and you're looking for recommendations. And I can tell you from uh, more of the savvy real estate agents I've seen throughout the years, not only agents that I've personally bought homes and sold homes and done business with, but those that are friends of mine, those that even work for Keller Williams, um, as I've been doing research over the last several months through, through my group coaching program, I've seen that 
that the most savvy agents out there are using social media to build relationships at scale. And what I mean by that is they're creating content around their businesses, but they're also playing the role of a of an advisor, of a community, you know, uh, a, a community helper. Uh, when folks are going on Twitter and they're looking for, for example, information on schools or restaurants, um, or people are just going to Twitter and they're saying, I'm looking to buy a home, they are they're listening to these conversations and they're helping prospective buyers. Or they're finding leads that way as well. So really think about it. Most consumers aren't going onto social media necessarily to look for a brand. They're not going on social media with the intent of looking um, for you specifically or your services. Instead, they're using social media as a way and an outlet to engage within their own communities, within their friends, their families, their neighbors. Social media amplifies and gives you the ability to go ahead and seek referrals and such uh, through these conversations that are being had. And with that being said, the key word here comes down to trust. So uh, according to Bright Local, 88% of people trust online reviews by other consumers as much as they trust recommendations from personal contacts. And um, what's really important to point out about this is if you are using Facebook and on your Facebook page you're gathering reviews and reviews can come in the form of anyone that you've shown a home whether they bought a home from you or not. Um, anyone that you've previously done business with that can vouch for you as a professional. Anyone that you've helped in your community. These are all individuals that can take to your Facebook page and they can leave reviews. And as you're going out and you're marketing yourself, your personal brand, your business, these reviews are gonna pop up and keep in mind once again um, that it's reviews that help build trust um, with prospective clients out there. Now let's talk about the 2017 National Association of Realtor Profile Home Buyers and Sellers. So once again, um, I let you know before that the median age of a first-time home buyer today is 32 years old. These are individuals that have already graduated college, potentially gotten married, they're having a family, and they're looking to go ahead and, and buy a home for the first time, which is great. Now, the study from NAR revealed where buyers found the home that they purchased. And again, this is a 2017 survey, so it's, it's brand new. It was reported at the end of last year, and 51% of respondents of the survey said that they found the home that they purchased on the internet. 34% um, was directly through a real estate agent. And then you can see where these numbers significantly drop off. So those yard signs that you're, and open house signs that you're putting in front of your homes or in the communities, less than 10%. Friend, relative, or neighbor, less than 10%. And then it drastically declines from there. So my goal with all of you is to help you really leverage and capitalize more not so much on the internet marketing side because instinctively buyers and sellers are going to the internet already, but believe it or not, it's actually how to leverage referrals. Um, so when you look at, at the categories of 8% friend, relative, or neighbor, I look at those as referrals. When you look at directly from sellers or new sellers, again, that's a referral, that's 1%. Those are opportunities, and I really like to focus on those opportunities because what you don't want to do is be competing in this giant pool and just be putting listings out there and expect for people to click because we know that home buyers and sellers are taking to the internet. Instead, what you really want to do is you want to tap into these sources that aren't really being tapped into at scale by your colleagues. So my purpose is to help all of you leverage the internet and leverage social media so you can drive more referrals, you can drive more clicks back to your, back to your website through things like Facebook ads. You can really position yourself as a, as a leader in your community and such. And going back to the 2013 and 2014 Realtor Technology Survey and best practices to win clients, there's some really interesting data points here. And first of all, if you look at the survey that's on the right-hand side of the screen, you see here, for real estate business purposes, which of the following do you participate in? And this is um, from, your, from your peers in the industry. Again, this is a now outdated report from three years ago. We don't have um, the most recent data, but back then, three years ago, you had agents saying that, that they were on Facebook. 77% um, of agents said that they were on Facebook, 75% LinkedIn, and then it drops off from there. If we had to do this report uh, today in the year 2017, I would go ahead and venture to say that you would see Instagram and Snapchat skyrocketing to the top, definitely well above Google and YouTube. Um, and it's interesting because in the first workshop um, that we did back in January, the majority in that program, it was, it was over 100 agents, the majority in that program were either using a combination of Facebook 
Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, so once again, you know, agents out there, they're already diving into these tools. What I really want to help all of you is have a firm understanding of how Facebook, for example, differentiates from Twitter, from Snapchat, from Instagram, because all of these social media tools are not one in the same. Now, when you look at the right-hand side of the survey, what are the reasons you use social media for your real estate business? You see here that's primarily used for building relationships. Um, you see here are things like visibility, exposure, free advertising, promoting listings. Um, what I'd really like to be able to get all of you to focus in on, oops, and we'll go back to this screen, what I'd really like to help all of you focus in on is a combination of using social media from where you go in the morning to go ahead and and post about what's happening in your world, where you go to go ahead and post about your listings, where you go to advertise your listings, um, or if you are a buyer's agent, where you go to pick up referrals. Um, so going back to um, analysis of where we're at today, most agents are using Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, however, as of 2016, Snapchat and Instagram have become the most active social networks behind Facebook. So these are platforms that you can no longer afford to use or not use. And the reason why is because of the demographics. Once again, the median um, age of a first time home buyer is 32 and this is the sweet spot. These are the millennials. They're primarily driving engagement and conversation on Snapchat and Instagram. Now let's talk about some strategies to go ahead and win clients. Um, first of all, you should be looking to use Instagram um, to post pictures of all of your listings um, or post pictures of your community. So I know um, that it gets a little tricky if you're a buyer's agent or a seller's agent, how you use social media is going to go ahead and be different. Or if you are, for example, an office manager and you're not necessarily out in the field um, with clients, how you use social media is going to vary. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of break these down. And again, this is specifically using Instagram, um, which is the second most active social network right behind Facebook and predominantly millennial driven. Um, so my advice to you is if you are a seller's um, agent and you are using social media to go ahead and post photos of your listings, do an inventory of the home. So take pictures of the bedrooms, take pictures of the living room, of the kitchen, of the backyard, you name it. Take pictures of, of at least eight to ten different scenes of the home and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to post all of these photos in a gallery on Instagram. Instagram recently rolled out a really cool gallery feature which allows you to create almost like a slideshow within Instagram. So think about it. If you stage this properly, you'll have your first picture of the gallery will be a picture of the front of the home and then people can swipe and they can li literally through Insta Instagram, they can scroll through and they can see photo one by one of the home. Now, really important aspect of Instagram that is often lost or folks just don't know is that you can use up to 30 hashtags in your posts. And the reason why you want to use hashtags on Instagram is because hashtags work like categories. Folks might not necessarily be looking for you and your content specifically, but they might be looking for the content that you're posting directly. So um, I would advise you that you use hashtags like hashtag kitchen, hashtag dining room, hashtag master bedroom, hashtag um, buy home, hashtag Atlanta, if you're in Atlanta. So you should always look to use at least 30 hashtags on Instagram because the more hashtags that you use, then you get your content syndicated and indexed into the feeds. Um, if you didn't use the gallery feature and for example you just post 10 individual photos and you post 30 hashtags in each one of those photos, now you can get your content indexed into, th into 300 different categories assuming that you post 10 photos. So Instagram is a very, very powerful tool to get organic reach on social media, something that um, you don't necessarily see anymore on a platform like Facebook. So speaking of Facebook, Facebook is a is an awesome advertising platform and what you want to use Facebook for is to run targeted Facebook ads. Um, so writing targeted Facebook ads is using Facebook's um, insight to be run ads based on your So um, if you are a buyer's agent and your sweet spot is engaging that uh, millennial demographic 
and you, you can use Facebook now to run ads for people, for example, that are searching homes or interested in homes. You can, you can run ads targeting people that have recently started a family or, or graduated from school. There's so many ways that you can customize Facebook ads in your favor to ensure that the money that you spend to promote either your listings or, or your website to drive clicks and referrals, um, you can be super hyper-targeted on Facebook um, and use it as a pure advertising medium. Now, as we start to think about things like Snapchat, you can use Snapchat in your own community and you can use things like geofilters to build awareness in your city or town. So anytime that I have personally looked to buy or sell a home, and full disclosure, I'm in that millennial age range, so I'm 33 years old, so I fall right in that sweet spot. And I've purchased and sold three homes at this point. Um, so anytime that I look to engage an agent in my community, the first thing I do is I go on Facebook and I'll typically ask um, you know, for, for a referral that way or I'll go on Twitter. And something I've started to see crop up in the last year or so from, from savvy agents is the most socially savvy agents are using Snapchat, not necessarily to do tours of homes and to talk about real estate, but to be a advocate in their community. So what's really cool about Snapchat is you can go to things like grand openings at restaurants. You can be an ambassador within your community. You can go to concerts, sporting events. You can use the different geo filters in market. Uh, and it really helps brand you as someone who's local to the community. So anytime someone thinks about buying or selling a home, the first person they're going to think about is that individual that's in their community that's an agent. Um, and when you really think about how referrals work, typically referrals come from friends, family, neighbors, coworkers. Uh, so you really want to create content within your community so you're constantly top of mind. And those referral sources over time will start to think anytime someone says, I'm looking to buy or sell a home, I'm looking to move, I'm looking to rent, you're the first person that comes to mind. So again, community ambassador, this isn't something that just applies to Snapchat. It really applies to all the mediums. Really think of that word community ambassador and how you can leverage social media um, to really be at the heart of your community. Now, here's some best practices that you can implement right away. So I would love for you to sign up for the course, um, but if you decide not to sign up for the course, these are still some actionable insights that you can go ahead and take away. So first of all, promoting your open house. Uh, promoting open houses is something that I've seen many agents do very well. I've also seen agents do this not so well. So the first thing that you want to do with any open house that you have is you want to run targeted Facebook ads um, based on demographic and persona. So once again, you can do um, interest-based targeting, you can do age-based, you can even do income-based um, targeting. So if you know that, you're, that you have a listing that, for example, is a $500,000 home, just using as an example, you can run ads specifically targeting Facebook users that, that meet the certain household income criteria that would be pertinent to someone purchasing a $500,000 home. Um, also using relevant hashtags on Twitter and Instagram, so this is critical. So like I said before with Instagram, all of your listings you absolutely should be promoting on Instagram as well as on Twitter. And the key is to use hashtags. So if your listing's in San Francisco, if it's in Atlanta, if it's in Miami, make sure that you're using hashtags relevant to that city. Make sure you're using hashtags like real estate, um, Keller Williams is a really active hashtag. Um, hashtag KW Agent is another really active hashtag. So play around, start using different hashtags. Um, also, in promotion of your listings, make sure that you schedule a Facebook Live um, or Periscope as a virtual tour. So um, you have access with just your iPhone or Android to create some really good content. You don't need fancy camera equipment. Um, I would encourage you to use your phone more to do these virtual tours and it's so easy um, for you to do using Facebook Live or, or, uh, or even Periscope. Um, cross-channel promotion. Um, what cross-channel promotion means is using s multiple social media channels. Um, so using a combination of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, even LinkedIn is going to be the key. Um, there is no way just to use one social network. I get asked this question all the time at Speak Engagements. Should I be on one social network? And my answer is absolutely not. You should be on as many as possible provided that your audience lives there and that you can get the value out of the platform. Now, here are some questions to win clients on social media. So the key word in social media that's often lost is social. You have to socialize. These are not just tools to go ahead and post content. Um, so a couple of questions that you should look to actively ask is, are you in the market for a new home or do you know someone that is? This is something that you should 
you should always be asking this question um, so you can stay top of mind with referrals. Um, another is what's important for you in the next home that you purchase as well as can I make a suggestion or recommendation on where to. So oftentimes if someone is on Twitter and they're looking for a cool restaurant to go out with their spouse or their partner, this is an opportunity for for you to sweep in and make a recommendation. Again, think of that community ambassador role. Think about how you can have more conversations on social media aren't necessarily related to home buying or selling or a particular product, but more or less positioning you as that go-to resource in your community. Now, here's what you can expect from the four-week social media for real estate agents MAPS group coaching course. Um, so first of all, you are going to have a comprehensive understanding of how to use social media marketing for real estate. So I'm going to break down for you specifically how to use Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as live video to sell more homes and also how to generate more referrals for your business. Um, so I'm going to essentially, you know, throughout the four weeks, break everything down for you and make it really simple and easy. Um, you're also going to learn about personal branding techniques. So a key to using social media is personal branding. Um, I'm going to show you different techniques on how you can brand yourself. There's actually some really good Keller Williams agents out there that I'm going to be using as an example for you to see. Also the future of real estate marketing. So towards the end of the course you'll learn about things like virtual reality, 360 video, augmented reality, how to use Snapchat geo filters. Um, so marketing is changing at a very, very rapid pace. Um, digital and social is not just impacting real estate, it's impacting virtually every industry out there. So we'll talk quite a bit about the future of real estate marketing and then most importantly strategies to win clients. So my goal is to help you be more successful in your business. Uh, part of that is uh, advanced tips and tricks for buying Facebook ads, what tools to use for marketing across platforms. Um, so, so specifically, what are the tools that you, sh you can and should be using to optimize content to save you time? I know from the first course that we did, um, from week one, it was evident that agents, office managers, um, market center leaders, they're all looking to save time. Um, so I'm going to teach you how to go ahead and save time using specific tools. Um, also leveraging emerging media for promoting listings. Um, and then engagement strategies to drive referrals. So a big part of the business is referrals. Uh, I'm going to teach you specific strategies on how you can drive more of those. So hopefully you're excited. Hopefully um, this has given you some insight um, as to social media and some tricks and tips that you can plug in right away. So uh, by the end of the course, um, what you will be able to do is have an advanced understanding of how social networks can be applied uh, for marketing in real estate. Um, once again, you'll be able to drive more website visits and clicks from posts. Um, you will be known as a community resource and industry thought leader. You'll know how to identify and engage prospective home buyers easily by using these tools. Um, and then most importantly, how to sell more homes in 2017 and beyond um, through developing a winning social media strategy for your business. So um, once again, hopefully this has given you some um, immediate insight that's actionable that you can apply. Um, the next social media for marketing uh, or social media marketing for real estate agents course um, does begin on Thursday, April 13th at 11 a.m. Uh, Central. So at this time right now um, is when uh, all the courses will run against a four week, one hour um, webinar in this format um, plus Q&A. So they actually go for 90 minutes. Typically it's content, me speaking to you, showing you know case studies and so forth for a straight hour. Um, and then we do reserve 30 minutes of Q&A at the end. All webinars are recorded and they are available for playback at your convenience. We also do have a Real Estate Masterminds group set up on Facebook, so the previous cohorts are already there. Those of you that sign up will be invited by me to take part in this Facebook Mastermind group. And throughout the group, you can have access to me and in between weeks, you can use that as a resource to ask questions. You can use it as a resource to network with your colleagues. Um, from an investment standpoint, the four week course is $297. And uh, if you do want to sign up today, I do encourage you uh, to go ahead and, and take advantage of this opportunity and, uh, and jump on it. So uh, with that, I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. I see that we have um, about five minutes left. So if you have any questions that have been weighing on your mind as it pertains to social media, even if I didn't cover it in the slides, feel free to go ahead and ask that question. And um, with that, I will turn it back over to Nicole. Hey, Carlos. Okay, so the first question I'm seeing here, when asking for reviews on social media, 
should we post from our page directly or on the page or should they post the review on their page to be shared on our page? Uh, that's a really good question. So I would encourage Ford Reviews to go onto the business page and then share onto your personal page the review. So think of the business page acting as like a website where that content should go there because uh, it, it's no different than if you go to a website and you read testimonials about business. So I would encourage for that content to go on the business page and then you can always share it out um, on, onto your personal page. If that helps. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question I'm seeing here is how, um, say someone's a beginner for social media, how step by step would this process be? Will they be able to follow along or is it something they'd need additional, they need to understand beforehand? No, it's, you know, anyone even at an entry level understanding can jump on and they will get immediate value. You know, the, this is not necessarily an advanced course because I recognize that there's folks of all different skill sets um, and experience using social media. And I also recognize that, you know, while for myself as a marketer, this comes very natural and easy. Um, you know, when you're when you're teaching to to adults that have different skill sets at all levels, you kind of have to break it down. Um, so I do go to the fundamentals of social media. Um, in the first week, I spend time really breaking down. Here's how you specifically use each platform. Um, I don't go into like the minutia of like here's how you do a tweet or here's how you do a Facebook post, assuming that these folks are already on the platforms. But I do. I do go specifically into here is how you use Facebook to market a listing. Here's how you use Twitter to go ahead and identify referrals and folks that are looking to buy homes. Perfect, thank you. And then we have another, with all of the work involved in posting and advertising, do you recommend hiring a company to leverage that? That's a good question. From the first course, there were several um, market centers that outsourced their social media management. Um, I think that's more, more or less subjective. I would definitely recommend for a lot of market centers that have a lot of overhead and, and, and need some assistance to manage for multiple agents. Um, you probably should look at investing into a dedicated resource. Um, I, I, again, I think it's subjective whether you have an agency or you do it in-house. You know, that's your preference. Uh, but yeah, as many, as many eyes, or I'm sorry, as many hands as you can get to, to help support your, uh, your office, I'm definitely all in favor for that. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then do you have any recommendations for companies that do that? Um, specifically in real estate, I do not. But I can go ahead and recommend some different resources. For example, um, Elance is a platform that I use as a recommendation. I believe it's in session two. Uh, because again, a lot of the feedback that I got from, from the first session was, was time. You know, agents want to save time. Uh, you know, market center leaders want to save time. So they are looking to outsource. And my recommendation was, was use Elance. And if you type in real estate social media, you can find someone that has the skill set. Uh, maybe they've worked in the business before. You know, maybe you know they've worked you know at an office uh, and, and they really get social. The only thing that you really can't necessarily automate, if you will, is is more of like the direct one-on-one -on -one relationship building aspect. Like you can do everything from automating content that goes out, uh, but when you're actually creating content featuring yourself as the agent, that's something that you have to specifically do yourself. So. Um, you can hire and outsource someone to push out posts for you to ensure that you consistently have a stream of content going out, uh, but you necessarily can't automate the engagement aspect. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then in Facebook, how do I strike a balance between my personal page used for engagement and my business page? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Oh, certainly. In Facebook, how do I balance between my personal page that I'm using for engagement and the business page? Good question. So I actually show some examples of this in the course from Keller Williams agents. 
specifically. And I would encourage you to use your personal page to really focus on on community, really focus on using that as a place where you go network. It's good to share content that's happening in your in your business world, um, but you're not necessarily going to inundate your 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 personal friends or on your personal page the same content that's on business. You really want to be a balance. I'll give you an example. There's an agent in Charlotte who, during the the NFL season, was posting content of you know the Carolina Panthers. Uh, on his personal page, but then he would also mix it up and he'd throw like every, for every like third post, there would be something you know related to either like the Charlotte market for real estate being like one of the top markets you know to buy a home right now. He would post like some pictures of listings, whereas his business page was just straight listings. It was just straight business. Perfect, thank you. And I guess we'll make this one the last one since we're about out of time here. Is there any way to see all the hashtags that are out there to make sure we aren't What's the last question? inappropriate? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Um, last question is. Uh, yeah, is cut there, out. Okay. Is there a way to see all the hashtags out there to make sure we aren't tagging something inappropriate for our brand? Um, there's no way to actually see all the hashtags out there. What I would recommend that you do is go on Twitter and go on Instagram and run a hashtag search. So whatever comes to mind. So for example, hashtag, let's say, dining room. Um, see what comes up in search results. Uh, I would say that would, probably, that would probably be the best way to get an indication of the content that others on social media are, are, are posting. Perfect. Thank you so much. So are there any final thoughts to wrap up? No. Once again, thanks to everyone that, that joined this morning uh, or this afternoon based on where you are dialing in from. Um, there will be another one of these sessions, correct, Nicole, offered in a couple of weeks. It's going to be um, relatively the same content, but if you wanted to, to check it out again for a refresher, uh, I encourage you to do so. And, uh, you know, hopefully you will sign up for the course. And I look forward to... Uh, being your, your coach over the next four weeks. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.